There's a different take on music at the Gateway Arcade in Harbor City this week. This time, it's an exhibition of photographs about rock music called Rock Archive, 50 Years of British Rock. The images on display celebrate such British musicians as the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, Led Zeppelin, David Bowie, Coldplay, and more. I, I think I like my picture of Amy Winehouse because she looks happy and relaxed and she had a reputation for none of these things. She even looks healthy in my picture. Um, she was a very great artist. She died uh, too young. It was a sad story but she, she did leave behind this wonderful music and when I photographed her it was a happy moment in her life and so I feel that that's a picture that her family liked to have. Long before the days of Adele, Amy Winehouse and Robbie Williams, and even long before she set up Rock Archive back in 1998, Jill Monoski was shooting photographs of rock stars. She'd been doing it since she was a teenager. I was just a teenager, about 14 years old, and uh, I stood outside Abbey Road Studios, and the Beatles were recording inside. I had a Kodak Instamatic camera, and uh, I went afterwards to Paul McCartney's house, and took a picture of Paul McCartney uh, with two of my school friends. So that was my first rock picture. Born in 1953 in Zimbabwe, Jill moved to the UK in the mid-1960s. Growing up in the UK, she couldn't help but fall under the influence of rock music, and she eventually chose a career far from her textile and graphic design majors from the Central St. Martin School of Art. It was a very strange situation to, to not really know what you're doing. But I do feel that sometimes you get given a, a chance, a lucky break, and um, that is part of the rock and roll spirit. Many of the rock and roll musicians don't know how to play music. They just, somebody gave them a guitar, somebody gave them a chance, and they, the next thing, they're professionals. They were attractive. It's not quite the same as looking at a picture of Shostakovich or, or Beethoven who died. So uh, rock music was for young people, and um, it was sexy, it was... Um, it was exciting. Uh, it was a no-brainer, as they say. So, so you think you can tell heaven from No music, no life is what my t-shirt says. And um, in a way, it's a, a phrase adopted by Rock Archive, because that's how we feel, the people who work there, that without music, there'd be no life. It's especially the rock music. Inspired by the Magnum Photo Collective of award-winning photojournalists, in 1998, Jill Filmonofsky had the idea of creating an archive of rock, combining her own images with those of other rock photographers, making them more accessible to fans and collectors. I had my own archive, which was at that time 30 years old, and I knew many people who also had archives, and I felt that between us, we could show rock history. So it was just a, a kind of... Um, an idea inspired by Magnum. And also the digital revolution of 1998, when everything moved from analog into digital, printing, photography, music, everything, internet. So it was a combination of these factors. This is one of my favorite pictures. It's Pink Floyd, of course, but also it's, it kind of has the atmosphere of the music, I think. The wall is a very spacey music. Um, it takes you very high in your head and that picture sort of sums up that particular piece of music. Nick Mason is the Pink Floyd's archivist. I'd worked with Pink Floyd and, uh, for, for the whole of their career. They, they were one of the first bands I did work with from 1972. And uh, when I began Rock Archive, I went to see him and he thought it was a very good idea. And so he was interested as well in the history. So he's, he always comes to our board meetings or we go to his office. The exhibition, Rock Archive, 15 Years of British Rock, is a show at Harbour City and features photographs taken between 1961 and 2010. It's part of the UK Now Festival, British Arts, organised by the British Council and will run until November 18th. All in all, you're just a